name here is Joe, called Victor Echo 1 Bravo Whiskey Victor, V1 BWV. And we're located here in New Brunswick on the east coast of Canada. What we're looking at this morning is an SB Bid X. I've had it probably about a month now roughly, and so far uh, I've had no problems at all as far as working. Uh, I work 99% of the time uh, with digital on this one, so that's the one I'm really looking at today. So what you're looking at right now is the SPX, as I mentioned. Um, and the opening uh, screen, this is the touch screen. Um, if you see other SPXs, they can have different backgrounds and your icons, of course, can be laid out in different areas. Since I've gotten the machine, I've installed the, uh, or got the WSJTX uh, working, and then I installed the WSJTZ and also JTDX. It's kind of a mouthful there. Uh, so far, I've settled on the WSJTXZ. Uh, it has more features, and uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to look at that. So basically, um, I normally, to start the unit, I will bring up Grid Tracker. A grid Tracker, of course, takes all the information from the WSJT program and um, puts into a, a, a GUI graphical interface. And I'll show you that in a minute when I move up to the other screen. And of course, we have the uh, SBITX program, which is where the, uh, uh, all the information from the uh, radio side is coming from. And of course, it has its own modes. Uh, and it has its own uh, digital modes as well. Uh, mostly I use uh, the WSJTX for the digital because it's more graphical. But you don't have to. None of these extra programs that I'm talking about besides the S uh, bit X program is required to, to operate any of the digital modes. But um, again, by preference, I, I uh, have an extra screen sitting here. So I'm running two screens. This is a touch screen right here. And uh, up above, uh, I'll show you, I say, a little bit later. So let's have a real quick look down below what you're looking at. I'm going to take, uh, I have a mouse plugged in because it's a little more convenient. And I'll go across here and there's the mouse coming in. So anyway, once the uh, SBITX is um, uh, turned on and you log in, this is what you would normally see. Uh, which is basically kind of a, look that, of a normal radio would look like. It um, has um, different areas for turning a AGC on and off, looking at the different bands, the VFOs, and the width for your band filters. You can slide it or pick one. I'm on digital mode at the moment, and if I'm running an external digital program, you know, like, uh, like WSJTX, then you need to have uh, the digital mode selected versus the FT8. If you put FT8, then that's going to use the internal program that's built into the SBX. SBX, sorry. So anyway, um, nothing unusual there. If you tap on these two or three times, you basically will filter through four pre-loaded um, uh, areas of the band. Volume control. And you can also do it by sliding where... Once you highlight it once, so if I click on this and highlight it and move it, then I can take the dial on the upper side here and move it up or down. And that's my RF, depending on the band. So I'll keep this down way in the background here so I'm not being uh, drowned out. So anyway, I'll just close that off. You can see the operation here. This is um, how you can move the dial. Either I can move it by my hand here like this by moving it with your fingers. And um, I... And there's the rest of the screen. Uh, you'll see the uh, solar data. You can bring up a keyboard um, in case you're doing CW or you're typing something in. Um, you can bring up a log book if you have a log book. There they are there. Um, various macros that you would use in CW or uh, the digital modes. Um, uh, Okay, so let me look back here and just see. I'll just close that one off. And you can tell net into it as well, and you have a council area. And then you have the settings where you would log in uh, so that it knows your call and, and your uh, your grid screen location. So that's basically it. Um, I see this is over by one, so I can just use this and move it to where it should be, which is 
074 for FT8. So I'll leave that in the background. So basically, that's it. And since I have two screens, I will just take it, and you're going to see it disappear here, but I'm going to actually move it to the top. And I'll show you again once I get up there. That way I don't have to move the camera back and forth. So up uh, in this area, you see at the very top, it may be a little hard to see it's small, but these are just the, that's just the programs that are running in the background. Um, you don't see them at the moment because they're actually on the large screen because I've moved them up. And, um, and that's really about it. You know, it's a regular computer as well, and you can see it has everything from games to the graphic programs, uh, almost all the hand programs, a whole stack of them there. Um, electronic type programs, Arduino, you know. So it's pretty well loaded in those areas. And of course you have a regular browser, uh, for, uh, which is your Chromium browser. So I'm going to put this up here for the moment, because this is uh, the grid tracker program, one of it. And what it does, I mentioned, it takes WSJT uh, or external type of programs and puts it all into a very nice graphical display uh, with the call signs, the grids, who's calling CQ, where they're from, their flags, their state, and their, their strengths, and how far they're away. And there's more. And you can select out what you want to see and what you don't want to see, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to move the camera up here, so try not to get dizzy, and I'll try to get it close enough where you can see it. The problem with the white screen, of course, is a bright screen. It uh, has a tendency to drown it out here. But I think you get... If I put it at an angle like that, the white doesn't show as much. So let's just see here. You can see. All right. So this here is what you were looking at a minute ago. But I dragged it from the lower screen where it is now. And I brought it onto the main screen. That's all I'm doing here. Um, you can size it to any size you want. I will size it to the full size. And you'll see that's what you, know, what you get for the full size. So I will bring it back down to the small size where I basically keep it back, back down in here because I don't use it very much once it's um, running. I just look at it for uh, you know a bit of information. What you have here is the grid tracker. And the grid tracker program, again, uh, it takes uh, all the stuff that's over on the left here from the WSJT uh, type programs um, and uh, takes that information and puts it into a nice graphical mode. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see as you see people talking back and forth, you can see these little ant trails. Um, depending on which direction they're going, it's going to be saying that this guy's talking this way or this guy's talking up. When you or I transmit, uh, basically, uh, it'll be from my location, which is right here. And uh, depending where I'm transmitting to, you would see a red ant trail. Alrighty, so what you're looking at now, as close as I can get here, I guess, without uh, it being completely... Uh, whited out by the screen is um wsjt x program but i'm running the um version by sq9 fve and uh, it's called the wsjt z now what it has is a lot more features it's got pounce it's got um uh, auto cq down here auto call uh, all kinds of other features um that are built in calls you can ignore, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So anyway, the bottom line is, it has more features. I feel a little more versatile, but um, uh, I load it up and it, it does work quite well. So you can see the stations here. Of course, the colors can be anything you want. So let's just have a look what it looks like when I go into a call, auto C auto CQ or something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to the very top here. Uh, you probably can't quite see it. Yeah, I'm just going up here. That's the traffic that I'm seeing. I'm going to pick a quiet spot. I'm going to click on it, do a right click, and set the transmitter and the receiver. You can barely see it, but that's in the clear right now, so I'm not going to transmit on anybody. Um, I run about 2 watts out of the actual uh, SPIDX, and then I send it to a, um, a uh, amplifier. Right. Just leaning over for the vessel, an amplifier uh, that puts out about 40 watts. That way, I can run this thing all day, every day, 24 hours a day, and it doesn't care. Even though it's a uh, you know a digital mode, it stays you know really really cool. 
So basically, I, one, one last check. I'm going to go a little bit over here to stay in the clear. I'm going to go down here and put this in Auto CQ. And let's see if we can drum up some traffic. So over here, uh, let me get this up here again. You can just barely see it there. You saw the yellow bar. That's me transmitting. <clears throat> now it's listening. See what traffic and on the main screen. If you look up here a little bit, you can see it's yellow. That's my call going out as a CQ. There goes another CQ, and you can see the yellow bar down here, which is the actual transmitter, what it's putting out. Um, it's putting out one watt right now, and I'm feeding that to an amplifier, which is putting out about 40, 40 watts right now. So let's see if anybody answers this morning. Not a huge amount of traffic, actually. Give her another call or so. There she goes. She's transmitting again. I see Trinidad, Puerto Rico, Finland. So far, they either aren't hearing me or it's just not the, uh, the coverage there this morning. So I'll just terminate. But you see, I don't have to do anything. Basically, what will happen is with the audio, audio, sorry, the auto CQ down in this corner, <clears throat> it uh, goes out and does the CQ, um, does the, you know, communication back and forth, log it for me. It's quite handy if I'm here in the shack doing something and not, I mean, you know, not really sitting at the radio itself, but I can be just jumping in the background and let the, uh, the system, um, you know, give the opportunity to other people around the other world to uh, be able to connect to the station. So that comes out quite well. Oh, there's somebody there. Now, and you can see what's happened here down in this corner. Grid Tracker automatically brought up a big screen and tells me who the call is. Uh, he's in Michigan. And all the information about uh, location, all that sort of stuff. So they've established communication. And you can see that for me, it's a green indication up here. And let me go over to the filter over to here so I can see what's going on. And down here is the okay there we go he's uh communicated give me a signal strength of uh, seven minus seven uh he's gotten a 10 and um he's gone and uh, done a, se a 73 my system's gone into standby basically and then it will continue on for another one now if you look over the grid tracker i'm gonna pick this up for a second because it's the only way to get close enough you can see the red that's just my last call that's finishing off, and that will disappear. But and, oh, there's someone else from overseas. Um, that is Finland. That's just started uh, and communicating with my system. He's given me a, a minus 19, and uh, you can see that the ants are going towards me, which means he's now sending stuff to me. And of course, when I transmit out, uh, the ants that you see the little red lines will be going the other way. So that's what you're seeing there. This is the, uh, what's really happening on the uh, WSJTZ. You can see they're communicating back and forth. Um, now, if you go down here, I'll go really slow here. Nine tenths of the time, I look at this and Grid Tracker. Because this is what is happening. You see the little red? That indicates that uh, I am in contact and we're, we're uh, locked together, if you want to look at it that way. We've uh, connected. And you can see... Uh, it was me that was calling uh, CW, basically. He's responded, and it gives me all the information about him. So this is really nice to have that on that smaller screen here. And I'll back off a bit. Just so you get a picture from a distance here. So what I see, it's a little bit better that way. So grid tracker on the upper right shows the geographics of the world. I can expand that out, of course, shrink it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The actual communication program, the heart of the system, is this one right here. Uh, the SBX, SBX radio transceiver aspect is all hidden below. And down below here, that when a call comes up, it automatically comes up. And if it's in the U.S., you'll get full details. But if it's in the rest of the world, uh, you'll get the, uh, the country, uh, basically, and that's it. So I see my 
system was communicating um, with the Finland and so far oh there it goes again so that's my communication from my location and it's uh, hidden behind right now uh, if I can do one thing here I'll just try not to get everybody dizzy but I'm trying to give you a close-up you can see a better graphical picture I'm gonna put that into the background and then then you can see more of what I'm seeing and my call is waiting he's lost communication there he's trying again and then you can see who I'm talking to so that's basically it. okay so I'll bring this back <clears throat> again you see the whole picture now the other stuff the radio it's still behind that uh, uh, the log or station that I'm uh, connected to it's just uh, I it's kind of layered behind it so looking back um, I have a little uh, power SDR meter looks works really well that tells me exactly a better indication there you go I'm putting out 1.4 watts 5 watts with basically zero reflection and I'm feeding it to um, an old solid state amp I have over here I've had for many years and it's a 150 watt type driver so when I put out 30 or 40 watts it's you know it, it doesn't even get warmed up so I can leave it on 24 um, the power supplies and the Linko and so there we have it so that is pretty much it you have the SBX I have a keyboard a mouse this is the um, side of it the next T60 connector which you can use uh, a battery and battery works well um, and on the right hand side basically in my case I have internet but it has Wi-Fi so you don't really need this at all I just have it because it's more convenient and um, that's my dongle for the mouse and um, that is just going over to a connector but it's not necessary so you can see it's very little besides an antenna that's it and there right now you see that 20 meters is is um, actually quite low because that normally is full of uh, contacts and right now it's getting down to next to zero so anyway hope you get a little bit better idea Again, this is Joe here in uh, New Brunswick. Have your E1 BWV. You guys have a, a great day. Seven threes.